Welcome back to the channel. This is a video on how to update npm dependencies and packages easily. For this video, you'll have to have node.js and Visual Studio Code set up. I've got a link above if you need help doing that. On completing this video, you'll be able to use the npm init command. You have to do install npm dependencies and packages, write npm scripts for frequently used commands, and how to update your npm dependencies easily with the npm check package. So we're starting with a blank project in Visual Studio Code. We'll open up the terminal and we'll start with the npm init command. Now it's going to ask you a series of questions. The first one is the package name, which is quite important. And that will, the default is based off the folder name of the project you've opened up in Visual Studio Code. And version, I normally put to 0.0.0. .0 .0 zero and then we'll bump that up as we go and the rest aren't that important because we're not going to be publishing to the npm registry let's open up, open up the package.json file there's one setting i like to add and that is private and we'll set that to true and what that does is it stops your work from accidentally being published to the npm registry. Now we'll go ahead and we'll install a package, but we're going to deliberately make sure that the package is out of date. So we'll do npm install, we'll install release dash please, and we'll do a version at 4.0.0 for example, the current version is around 15. So we'll install that. And then if you have a look in your node modules, you'll see a, a whole bunch of packages that all relate to it. But in the middle, you will find the release please package. If we go into package.json, you'll see it's version 4. And if we go into our package.json file, you'll see we've got version 4 installed. Now to do the updating, there is a package called npm check. And I'll leave a link to its npm page. And there's two ways we can run it. The first way is if we just run npm check, it will provide us with a list of packages that are not up to date or up to date. And the other way we can run it is if we use npm check dash u or dash update, it will provide us with an interface for updating and it will tell us what kind of update is available. Now we could install it as a dependency by typing npm install npm dash check but there really is no reason to install it because if you're using this program you're definitely going to be online so you may as well get the most up-to-date version of it at that time the way we'll do that is we'll go to our scripts and we'll take out test and we'll change it to update and we can use a special command called npx which is included with all of the modern versions of npm and then we'll run npm check you can use dash u or dash dash update. And then you may not have the NTM scripts tab available. So restart Visual Studio Code if you have to. And then you should get that pane up. You could just use the command npm run update. But it's much easier to hit the play button. So it's going to download the npm check package for us on the fly. It will then go through and it will check your package.json dependencies. And it's telling us now we've installed version 4, but version 15 is available. And that's classed as a major update because it's the first number in the version number. If it was the second number, it would be a minor update. And if it was the third number, it would be a patch. If to keep in mind that for major updates, there can be breaking changes configuration that you're currently using or the way that you're calling the functions may not work. So you have to click on that link with control click to check the documentation before you undertake a major update. We can hit space to select it and then enter and it will install the update for us. And the updates have been done. It does give you a warning that you should rerun all your tests in your project to make sure that everything's still working after you have completed the updates as there's no guarantee even with a patch or a minor update that things will continue to work as expected. So that's it for the video. I've left a link to the files for this tutorial in the description below. 
If you liked it, remember to hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button so you're notified of my regular coding tutorials.